I promise to give you my eternal loyalty and heart. For you are the only man I will ever need. Okay. I'll listen to you. I'll nurture you. I'll fight, but I will be true. I will always do my equal share, and I will vow to never give up on you. I'll try my best to fulfill your every need. I'll walk hand in hand with you, but I will always give you your separate space to grow. From this day forward, I'm here. I'm right here. So you don't let go. You're my strength, my joy, my everything. And when you feel like the world is crumbling, look at me, because I'm your rock. I will love you, and I just want to thank you for choosing me. Because you chose me. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. This is the story of Lavinia Gardner. A woman with a heart of gold, who finally believed she had met the man of her dreams. A man who would love her deeply and who she could be herself with. Sadly, her life would be brutally cut short by the man who vowed to love and protect her. On one tragic day in a fit of rage, he would douse her in lighter fluid, then set her on fire. Leading to a sequence of events that would devastate her loved ones and shock the entire community. What could make someone violently attack someone that they claimed they love and wanted to spend the rest of their life with? Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, known for its hustle and bustle, is a big city full of life, excitement, and history. With its towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, it's a place where dreams are made and broken. But like any big city, Chicago has its dark side too. Behind the glitz and glamour, there's a gritty reality of crime and danger lurking in the shadows. 35-year-old Lavinia Gardner, known affectionately as VV, lived in South during Chicago. She was a woman who always had a smile on her face, she had a lot of friends who really liked her. She was someone who loved to have fun and was always there for her friends when they needed her. Her positive attitude and cheerful personality made her the heart of any party. Despite any tough times she might have had, Lavinia stayed upbeat and hopeful, spreading joy wherever she went. Lavinia was in a relationship with 31-year-old Henry Taylor. Henry was a self-described hothead with a criminal record, but Lavinia loved him for his goofy and silly side. Their connection began with just physical intimacy. Living close by, they'd meet up on the same street, often just for sex. But as time passed, something unexpected happened. What started as a casual fling evolved into something more meaningful. Beyond the physical attraction, they found themselves developing a deeper bond, forging a connection that went beyond the bedroom. Their love story reached its peak with a spontaneous trip to Las Vegas, where they decided to tie the knot in a whirlwind ceremony. Surrounded by loved ones, they exchanged vows amidst laughter and joy, their happiness captured in countless photographs and video. It is truly now my great honor to pronounce you as husband and wife. You may seal your promises with a kiss. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor, sir. Walk your hands After their Vegas adventure, they embarked on a journey of married life, enjoying the excitement and newfound closeness. Yet, behind the smiles and social media posts, a darker reality began to emerge. Despite their public image of happiness, cracks started to appear in their relationship. What once seemed like a fairy tale romance slowly unraveled into a nightmare of conflict and resentment. 
than the startling Facebook livestream. Henry didn't hold back, openly discussing his struggles with anger management and his previous brushes with the law. He could be heard saying he doesn't care about going back to jail and that he had nothing to lose. At the time of the livestream, he is married to his wife and doesn't consider that he would be losing her. He even goes on to talk about a disturbing scenario in which he would open up the head of one of his wife's friends and set them on fire. This was jealousy, triggered by the mere fact that this friend had pursued a college education. Hey, say, oh, girl, I just got some suck it, uh, nine up. Bang. What? Courtney graduated college. Cor Coco went to college. Yeah, Cynthia went to college. From... They already went to school. Yeah, university. They from... went to school, so I guess it's time they can. Oh, you, you know? Lying? Yeah. Wow. And so, <laughs> the f and I'm not saying nothing's wrong because I'm proud of right. you. Because my don't get it school. twisted. I am proud that you went back to school. Don't get it twisted. We don't care because Courtney got a fucking education out of a cereal box. Boy, I'm up in line. I don't care about who homie got they education. My homie got an education. That's all that matters. I don't care about what no other got. <laughs> yeah, my homie went and bought a bin. Your homie. Get them out. I don't give a about nobody else, homie. He over here on his live. No, I'm on your live. Matter of fact, I'm from the end. You ain't. You ain't on my. You on your own my live. I'm from the end, man. Get on yours. You're a hater. Talking about, talking about. Girl, my friend. He's on his live. My friend the most. graduated. Your neck was like this. And how my, my friend, neck was? My friend graduated. Big head, boy. Look at this cracky y'all. Uh. I got real friends getting education. Don't put me on your live because I don't f some of them sucking that on your page. Yeah. My phone falling, babes. Help me. I'm waiting oh. to run into one of your. I'm waiting to run to run run into run into one of your friends. I'm gonna Baby. open this head up. Baby, I put this thing on. Um, I'm gonna this. open his head up and set his on fire. There you go. My bad, y'all. Get that game, boy. This is some fire. Open this. Don't lie. And be like ah. Maybe. I told you, bitch. Cause you ain't really. We ain't married, y'all. You got my now. I'm just finding you. Boy, we went to a photo shop. That shit was photo shop. <laughs> yeah. <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm goofy. I'm not gonna get all these potatoes. That's for sure. Maybe I don't want all them potatoes. Your potato head. Your boy. mama got a potato here. Your mama got a potato butt. I thought I was gonna say Harry on the map. I'm gonna eat that motherfucker like. I just laugh real fast, like <laughs> really, cause he talking about me on his live, so I had to get on my live and talk about so him. But I, I end talk up about eating. Your mama on my live, bro. Let me call her. Yo, mama, look. Let me say how petty she is. <laughs> she won't send me no friend request. She'll be on the outskirts and be like, <laughs> "You ain't even my friend." Did <laughs> I? Cause soon as she get on the phone, she what she gonna say? Oh, he always posting stuff. Henry. I told him. Henry. Let's stop saying my name like that. If we wind up pregnant. Last girl. I'm finna call and tell you that. Last girl said my name loud like that. She I'm finna call and tell him you strapped him. He a crackhead. Who a crackhead? You. <laughs> you sure you wanna take it there? Bro. You know my mama was doing drugs when I was a baby. I. You're a crackhead. You're a crack so you baby. My you just told everybody your business. I just co-sign. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I see what the f I got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just see him. I'm gonna do you like I'm gonna do this one. Bro, don't put me in your f***ing <laughs> bro. Y'all be a banging this one. Go on. I'm hungry. I ain't ate all day. Yes, you did. You had a whole gyro bro, and some okra. And you want me a fucking gyro and I'm some thought ass or something. Nigga, that's what the hell you wanted. You, uh, you want a gyro? I'm worth, I'm worth more First than that. First of all, that's why I got you crab, babe. Yeah. That's shrimp. Yeah. He an idiot. Fucking gyro. You wanted a gyro, first of all. I like when them that sell weed and loose squares all day and all they got enough money to do is get a gyro. I look like... Y'all can tell his mama was on crack when she had him, right? <laughs> yeah, his mama was good in the house when she had him, too. 
Come on, man, get me out your fucking boy. No, can you open this for me, please? I get a sip of it. Okay. All right, yeah. Just a little bit, because you got... No, it's my nails. I don't want to touch... It's the nails for me. Will you this? I don't have nothing on my hands, darn It's okay, babe. All right, babe. Now, since I got to do this, I'm... I said you have a sip, but no, you got your... 3% tax. No, but don't drink all my sh Okay. <sighs> he irritating. I'm just saying, listen, baby, listen. Just imagine this. I Please. bought you a Pepsi sitting hey, right hey, there. Hey, hey, and I bought hey, you icy. Hey, my mans, you get too loud. You get too loud. <laughs> I bought you two. Hey, you're going to have to speak to me. You want to talk to me nice, baby. Like this. I bought you two. Yeah. Bought you a Pepsi nice, and an icy... Wrong. Hey, wrong. Next, yeah. Next time you get into it with somebody, you just calm it down. And be like, hey, mm -hmm. talk to me nice. Talk to. Cause, Cause I look, used to say that, that shit all the time. Cause I'm about to fuck you up. I really got anger issues because I'm short as fuck. <laughs> I really have the short man syndrome, and I'd be ready to explode. Like when dude hit our car, and I was like. Uh, I knew oh, I, that's, oh, I, no, <laughs> no, baby, baby. I knew I had to get out baby, the car. That's y'all. No, this baby. man hit our car, right? I am so fucking too, by the way. But he hit our other guy. Listen. I'm like, yeah, let me get I'm out. I'm like, man, don't let me do this to you. I, I don't want to hurt you. He, do what you need, man. Yeah, I really be man. saying crab up worse oh, than this, boy. but I am on last. So I, I ain't gonna let y'all see how I really be for. eating. I will go back to prison. And I ain't going for a fight. I'm trying to break your motherfucking neck. Henry's chilling admission painted a troubling picture, hinting at a deeply troubled individual capable of unspeakable acts of violence. It was a glimpse into a dark and dangerous mindset, leaving viewers shaken and raising red flags about the potential danger he posed to those around. Behind closed doors, their love story took a sinister turn as arguments escalated into violence, leaving both parties trapped in a cycle of abuse. Tragically, this story of love gone wrong reached its devastating climax with a senseless act of brutality that shook the community to its core. On April 16, 2021, at about 1.40 in the morning, something horrific unfolded. Henry Taylor, consumed by rage or madness, doused Lavinia in lighter fluid and callously flicked a lighter at her, setting her ablaze. Imagine the terror she must have felt as flames engulfed her, Lavinia ripped her clothes off that were on fire and leaped into the shower to douse the flames. After managing to douse the fire, she dashed through the streets for two blocks until she reached the firehouse on 10458S Hoxie Avenue. There, she pounded on the door, begging for help from the firefighters inside. It was a desperate race against time as she fought to survive the horrifying ordeal she had endured. Can you imagine the scene as she pounded on the door, her body ravaged by fire, her mind surely racing with fear and pain? The firefighters who answered her desperate plea for help were met with a sight that would haunt them forever, a woman with second and third degree burns, covering more than 70% of her body, her life hanging in the balance. Lavinia's words to the firefighters were haunting. She said she knew her husband wanted to kill her and that she should have left him long ago. She also asked firefighters if she was going to die, they could see that her skin melted over her fingernails and her hair extensions fused with her flesh. Despite their best efforts and the medical intervention she received, Lavinia succumbed to her injuries just over a month later on May 21st at the University of Chicago Medical Center after receiving skin graft surgery. Henry Taylor turned himself in to authorities and in a taped confession, he callously admitted to his heinous crime. He revealed that he knew exactly what he was doing when he set Lavinia on fire, even going so far as to call her family afterwards to confess his barbaric act. He repeated several times that he was not even that close to his wife and described how he flicked the lighter at her and watched her body engulf in flames after dousing her with lighter fluid. Henry Taylor's actions were not those of a loving husband but of a monster. He inflicted unimaginable pain and suffering upon his wife, he was charged with his wife's murder and held without bond. Now, as the wheels of justice turn, Henry Taylor finds himself facing the consequences of his actions. Charged with the murder of his wife, he sits behind bars awaiting his day in court. But no amount of punishment can undo the irreparable damage he has caused, nor can it bring back the life that was so senselessly taken. As the community grapples with the shock and horror of Lavinia Gardner's tragic death, one question echoes in the minds of all who hear her story. How could such a monstrous act of violence occur within the confines of a marriage, a supposed sanctuary of love and trust? Yet, in the darkness that lurks within the human heart, sometimes even the closest bonds can shatter, leaving behind nothing but pain and sorrow in their wake. 
My condolences to Lavinia's friends and loved ones. She did not deserve what happened to her. She should be here. May you continue to heal and one day find peace. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.